You learn to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abba brings you God's word with deep insight and power. God bless you. Hmm? So you don't need to go to the market to buy one. You already have one given. All you need to do is accept. Accept that this lamb was given and was slain for you. But before that thing happened, before Jesus was slain, before Jesus was given, God instructed. Because these are all type and shadow experiences. All right? These are all Old Testament experiences. What God was going to do in the New Testament, He began to do it in the Old Testament through type and shadow. So anytime you see lamb in the Bible here, though it might be talking about a lamb, a sheep, but what God sees is a son. So everybody needed to buy one. And the one you buy cannot substitute for another person's own. They can't do your own and do another person's own. People didn't share lamb. They all had one, one lamb. And during the Passover, everyone would carry their lamb to Jerusalem. The Jews would carry their lamb to Jerusalem to go and offer sacrifice for their sin. So now this is what, it was Moses that God initiated that thing with. It was Moses when they were about to leave Egypt that God started this principle. This whole thing that ran in the Old Testament all the way till Jesus came. It was Moses that he started that Jewish feast of Passover. This was when Passover began. And even Jesus observed it when he came. Before he went to the cross and even after he rose from the dead and spent 40 days or 50 days with these guys. He observed it. Okay. Let's leave that one. Let me explain this very quickly because I want to just do application and then we'll leave. Verse 4. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the persons. According to each man's need, you shall make counts for the lamb. Quickly. Your lamb shall be without blemish. So this is the thing. The lamb you are going to sacrifice must be whole and hearty. It can't have a faulty leg. It can't have a faulty hand. It can't have any spot. It can't have any dirt. Very clean, spotless lamb without blemish. Blemish is without imperfection. Hmm? Physically fit. One eye is not blind. The other one is open. No. All that also God was trying to illustrate that the one who is going to come to die for the sins of the whole world was going to be without blemish he knew no sin he had no sin in him no man could die for his fellow man because everyone was already contaminated by the sin of Adam even unborn children were already in sin you know sin is not first a doing sin is first a being eh? it's first a nature before an action so a child is born into the world and you're saying this child is innocent he has not done anything no the child was born in sin he also needs to experience salvation because when adam fell everything inside him also fell with him hello somebody so the only one that was qualified to come and die was jesus because he had no sin in him he was without blemish he was a perfect sacrifice so he was qualified to come and die there was no sin in him if there was sin he couldn't have paid the price for sin in the old testament if the lamb had blemish he couldn't have paid the price for men who had blemish he couldn't have paid the price for men who were in sin so god required that they get a very perfect lamb and sacrifice it so that their sin can be atoned for Hmm? an atonement means covering it's a temporal state of appeasing God a way to appease God temporarily usually for one year before another sacrifice is demanded but the one Jesus did does not appeal for a period does not appeal for one year it appeals for all ages forever and ever somebody shout amen Amen. okay and I said your lamb shall be without blemish a male of the first year are you seeing that not even a female lamb that's why a woman did not die on the cross there was a man who died on the cross somebody's not hearing what I'm saying Hmm? 
And that's why God did not kill the first daughters of Egypt. He killed the first sons. Hmm? So he said, it must be a male of the first year. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. So there are two species of animal you can use. One, you can use goat, you can use sheep. But they must be male. And they must be without blemish. Hi, oh Lord, help this church to be a Bible-loving church. Help this church to be a word-loving church. Some days are not for shouting now. We will get somewhere and it will enter the prophetic. We are coming there. But you need to know Bible. You need to, that's why you're a Christian. Hmm? Okay, verse 6. Who is that? Okay. Now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. Eh? And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the doorposts and on the lintel of the houses. So two places you should put it. One is what? On the doorpost, okay? Yes, sir. The doorpost. Hi. Baby, somewhere along, please find me, search me a perfect picture of that. You'll find it on the internet. A picture of the blood on the doorpost and on the lintel. You know what lintel is? That part of the house before the, the roof. Is that correct? As a lintel. That part of the house before you now do roofing. Like in this building now, lintel should be that climax before you now have that roofing. I'll show you the significance. Why is God doing this application? Why is this application important? Most things people come out to witness in the daytime starts from their house. Eh? Your house is a critical factor. I will talk about the issue of house later. Your house, where you live, where you sleep, where you wake up. That's where altar is. That's where you should have altar. The place where you live. The place where you... You see, native doctors sleep inside shrine. That's where they live. That's their house. You see God, he has a house. So, and the house where he lives has an altar. And the altar there always burns with sacrifice. The altar of God is where the throne of God is built. I'll show you that in Revelation. It's where the throne of God is built. And then the throne of God has certain sacrifices you offer there. One of the things you bring to the throne of God is blood. Another one you bring there is incense, is worship. Another one you bring there is fire. It's called prayer. So there's fire that proceeds from the order of God, which is prayer. There is incense, which is worship, that proceeds from the throne of God. And there is also blood that is offered at the throne of God. That is what Jesus took when he rose from the dead. Why he was going. Remember Mary Magdalene tried to touch him. He said, no, 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 don't touch me. If you touch me, you will contaminate me. Because I am not just going back to the Father. I am going to offer sacrifices now for you. The one that I said on the cross is for you guys. This one is going to be... Is to wash you guys from sin, save you guys from sin. But the one I'm taking to the Father is for the Father, is for the throne, is for the mercy seat. The one I'm taking to Him is to offer sacrifice at the Father's throne. So that every time He sees, He sees with the eyes of mercy, not with the eyes of judgment. I'm going to offer that blood back there so that every time you speak, that blood answers. So see the issue here. God's house is where his throne is. It's called the holies of holies. It's like here now. This is a house. This is your house. Your throne. We welcome you. Lord, we welcome you. 
This is your house, your throne. We welcome you today. You think church is just one building? You can just. This is God's house. Church is house for God. That's why when I build church, when I sponsor the building of church, I'm not just building a place people come to sit down. I'm building a temple for God. Temple for God is house for God. It's a living place, a dwelling place for God. The way you go to your house, open the door, enter inside and sit down or lie down. That's how God opens church, enter inside and lie down. I'm not talking to people here. I'm not talking to people here. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? That's the way God opens the door also, enters the church and find altar and go and lie down. That's the way when we are doing worship, he goes to the dining table and eats. This thing is how so. It's not just, you, you see, it's a house. So what God was telling Moses here is the same way blood is offered in my house in heaven. And the same way blood is offered in my house on earth, which is the church. If I start showing you the tabernacle and the three courts, you see in the holies of the holies, that's where the priest takes blood sacrifice to. That's where he takes blood sacrifice. So God is saying that in the kingdom, you have what you call kings and priests. Every Christian is a priest. Every Christian is a priest. And if you have a house, your house is not just a dwelling, it's not just a living place. It's not just anywhere you go to to go and sleep, wake up and go. That house is an altar. That house is a temple. That house is a, is a place, a shrine. A priest is living there. So see, you want to have dominion in your world. You want to have dominion in the marketplace. You want to have dominion in your career. You want to have dominion in any sphere of life. That dominion starts from your house. So some of you who just live in your house like it's just my house. You just be playing anything you want to play there. Be playing David O, Bonner Boy. Just wake up and be playing nonsense. Just put things anyhow. Just make the place a dwelling camp for demons. You just open the doors to anybody to come. You don't understand the implication of what you are doing. Priests don't leave. That's why I'm telling you. No scriptures. That's why everybody cannot just show up in my house. A pastor told me, say, I find pleasure coming to you. Sometimes we, we talk on the phone. I say, where are you? I want to come. He said, no, let me come to your place. Because every time he comes, you see, there is this thick aura of God's presence. A certain woman sent me a voice note of what somebody was testifying about. I, I might even play somewhere at the end of the day, so you hear. A woman, she had a, there's a program they were planning, and then there were some people who were going to come to her house to pray. About 100 of them or so. And they came to the hundred women. They came to the house. They were in the living room somewhere outside. And then they were having prayer meetings. Started at seven and closed somewhere around twelve or so. And after that, the woman now did a voice note and sent this woman. He said, What kind of house is that? He said, I've never prayed so well in my life. He said, I came to your house and my prayer life changed. You see, when I entered, I felt the presence of angels everywhere. When I came in, I felt the presence of God everywhere. I, I felt the Holy Ghost in that place. Like praying was so easy. Communion with God was easy. There, there's a portal in that place open. I saw traffic of angels. She was saying it to this woman on voice. So the woman says, See what somebody was telling me. I now called and told her, What is happening in your place is a, it's an angelic experience, a heavenly experience. That place is an altar. That's what it is. There are houses you go to to pray. Heaven will answer. Because a priest is living there. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? When you go to a shrine, does does native doctor have a house, maybe in one part of the town, and then goes to shrine differently? No. Usually, go to any native doctor's house. Even if he has a bigger shrine somewhere, go to his house. You always find one at the backyard. You always find one in one secret room. Have you not seen occultic men, opening men? When they go to the church, the, the, the occultic temple, Kanayo and Pete Duchi and... Um, the rest of them, you know those guys that act Nigerian movie, they always act cultism and all that. And when they go to their temple and they go and do all their Amen. When they finish doing it inside that temple, guess what? 
Kanayo goes back to his own house. Inside that room, there's one wardrobe where there are things. And then he goes in there to go and offer sacrifice. Periodically. And he always tell the wife and tell children, let nobody enter this room. If I catch you in this room, I kill you. And he put the room key and lock. Nobody dares goes there because it's a sacred place. That's where the thing that works for him is. So when he enters there, he wears the robe and the attire of their temple and begin to invoke. And one meal cuckoo will just appear. And then the man will bow. She did. <laughs> My soul. Why did you wake me up from sleep? Shut up. Do you normally sleep? <laughs> Spirit is asleep. <laughs> Have you heard that God slept or slumber? What kind of spirit is sleeping? Your own is asleep, mine is awake. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Amen. And then can I always say, Greatest priestess of the rivers, I want more powers. I am contesting for election and I want my party to give me the ticket. <laughs> Is that what you want? Yes, priestess. <laughs> you know the cost for power. I want your first son, Ebuka. Call his name three times. You see? Ah, but great mistress. Ebuka is my only son. Please, is there no other way? There is no other way. She has gone. I am a tanga. Amen. Amen. But he will do the sacrifice. And when he comes out, something will change in the party and he will get the ticket. And then you look at them and feel, oh, these politicians and these guys who are just, uh, you don't know there's something somewhere that works for them. You see why you need to be trained? Because you, you see some human beings out there, you think these are just human beings who woke up from the house and dashed out like you. They didn't dash out like you. Some dashed out like that and didn't dash back. They took their body on the road. Because they do understand altar. There are a lot of avoidable things. Some dashed out like that, stray bullet killed them. Some dashed out like because there are forces looking for empty people. Forces looking for bloodless souls. Forces looking for people without the mark and the seal of the Holy Ghost just to pick. Sacrifices are offered every day, and then they are, they, the targets are people who are not prepared with these things and teaching. Some accidents you see on the road, yeah, it just happened. People just died like foul. No, 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 no. Not for you who know this thing. It's even provision that if the accident must occur, you can disappear from the car. Oh, you don't know. You don't know. Have you not heard that I was one time attacked by some guys who raided me? And I was inside a wardrobe hiding. And they opened the wardrobe and was looking. They couldn't see me. Have you not heard that story? And one of them went outside with guns, oh, and said, "He know they, he know they, he know they." Yeah, that was it. My wife opened the wardrobe. I was looking at me. I was crying, thinking that everything is gone. But look at them looking at me. They couldn't find me. <laughs> Why not? There was no cloth in the wardrobe. That wardrobe is an empty wardrobe. No clothes. It's not like I was hiding by my jalabia. No. I was there. They opened. Bam! That's why I stood. They couldn't see anything. Because when the glory of the Lord appears in the temple, it shall be for you a shield 
and a canopy of protection. It covers you. Do some of us don't know what to do in the midst of danger. You just were moving, driving, you met armed robbers on the road. <laughs> I have finished. Jesus, uh, no, not, it's not saying Jesus so uh, that will save you. I have finished. God, come and save me. No, that's not how you'll be saved. I know what to do at that point. I would usually lift up my hand. I hide myself behind the blood. Let the blood of Jesus now shield me. I hide myself behind the canopy of your presence. Your word says, touch not my anointed, do my prophet no harm. No harm will befall me. Eh? At that point, I know what to do. So, this is what God is saying to you now. Listen carefully. That if you have a house, turn that house into an altar. And altars always demand blood. Can I say that again? As if you have a house, turn the house to what? Turn the house to what? Uh-huh. And altars always demand blood. One guy met me one day. I don't know what is happening to me. Everything is just going to be. No, no, no. I said, how do you live in your house? Because you must have dominion, dear first, before you show up. You're doing business. You must have dominion in your house first before you show up. You see, David said, Early will I seek thee. Where do you seek God from early? It's not from your house. Hello? Early will I seek thee. That's to tell you that anything good that will happen to you, first of all, you must get it in the house. Okay, because of time. And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts. Two doorposts, front and back, and on the lintel of the houses where they eat it. So, part of that meat you eat, but don't eat the blood. Take the blood, put it on the doorpost. Now, watch this. Ah, yeah, I can understand that. The next verse. Oh, Lord. Then they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire. This is even the best way to eat meat. Roasted meat is healthier than cooked meat. You know, meat is red meat. Part of what is destroying people's health is too much of intake of red meat. Goat meat, nkwabi. Nkwabi, siyewu, and all those cow meat. And every time you are sitting on it and grinding. Hmm? God didn't say you should cook it. He didn't say you should put curry. He didn't say you should put thyme. And all those seasoning that makes you almost pass out when it's not your house, they are cooking it. Has it happened to you before? If it has not happened to you before, you've not seen life. You just get angry, lock your house and just walk out. Because why is that terror flying by day? To make matters worse, it's only Sunday. Then something happens when you want to fast. <sighs> some will just release something in the air. What happened to me one day? I got up from my bed, walked out. I was outside in my compound, and I perceived one. Hmm. I didn't know when I opened my mouth, I began to worship. I am delivered, praise the Lord. Because in my heart, I thought it was in my kitchen, it was proceeding from. I am delivered by his blood. Ruth, when is this food getting ready? That is not me who is cooking, no. I said, what? Where is this coming from? It was then I realized it was the next facility. Do you know what? I made sure I cooked it in the house. Amen. Somebody, most of us like meats, it's good though. But do you know, even for your health, there's a, there's a stage you can't be eating it. Like now, me, I'm moving from red meat and returning back to snail. Returning back to snail. So I like meat though. There's this part of meat I like so much. You know, goat's meat, for instance. That part that is flesh up, and now that one that has some oil under. I don't know if you know that. You will know better. It has some oil and some. Is it aquara they call it? Amen. It has brisket bone. Not biscuit bone, brisket. 
Hmm? I like that kind of meat. Anyway, some things that are so sweet, at a certain age, you begin to cut down on it. So God said, roast it. God is a dietitian. God is a nutritionist. Amen. That's why if you know your Bible, you will live long. The wisdom of God is everything you need. You even see health. He's talking about preservation by the blood, but he's also dealing with health issues too. So some of the meat you buy, like your goat's meat, is of cooking roast. Roast. I don't know if they roast anything with gas. Do they roast with gas? They don't roast with gas. So that means you might need firewood somewhere in your house. Okay, even apart from firewood, there's this other kind of local. They used to call it Okwa Biola. That's what they call it. Oh, is it Okwa Biola? Who knows it? Oh, please, which one am I talking to here? Is it Priestly Hills or Hills Priestly? Eh? Eh? Charcoal stove. That's what I'm this Abiola stove. That's what they call it. They call it Abiola stove. Because it was the kind of stove they used to use during also Abiola. That 1993 uh, Abiola riot. So they, they usually call it Abiola stove. So it's a charcoal stove. So you can find one and put at the back of your house. Put charcoal inside and then lighten it. I think that one can roast. Uh-huh. Eat roasted meat is good. Then they shall eat the flesh of that night, roasted in fire, with unleavened bread. So you see, unleavened bread here now is bread that has no yeast in it. Hello? It has no yeast in it. So, that bread is the one we use during communion, the one that Jesus ate, unleavened bread. And the purpose of the unleavened bread is so that you don't add anything to the body. Yeast actually stands for sin. Hmm? Hmm? It stands for sin. So, the bread that is required to take for communion is a sinless bread. That's yeast there. Unleavened. Unleavened. Have you heard the word leavened? A little living, living at the whole lump. So when you put yeast inside bread, it swells the whole thing. One small dough you made, you now put yeast. Everything just blow. Like bloom, bloom. Hmm? So God is saying, don't add yeast to the bread. Because yeast is the presence of sin. It means sin. So remove the living, which is the yeast, and leave it unleavened. Let it not swell it. Let it because the body of Jesus you are taking is sinless. And with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Okay, verse 9. Are you sure I can still do my, my slide? I will just do an application and we'll go. Do not eat it raw, nor boiled at all with water, but roasted in fire. Its head with its legs and its entrails. Okay, just keep going because of time. You shall let none of it remain until your morning. Hmm? So you can't keep it. It's the same thing that he told them when he gave them manna. He said, don't preserve it. Eat it once. Eat it all. Don't keep it. If you keep it, it will go bad. I'll tell you the importance of that. When manna was raining from heaven, and God asked the children of Israel to eat manna, and not preserve it. Hmm? Hmm? You know, when you preserve anything, if you, if you buy something, like maybe frozen like food, like fish, hmm? and you don't consume it immediately, or like tomatoes, you don't consume it immediately. If you don't put it in the fridge, or if you don't put it inside any other preservative, like salt and all that, it gets bad. Yes, Is that correct? So, there's another form of preservation that the children of Israel knew on how to preserve their food. Like manna, when it rained, they felt this thing will not rain again. So it's better we preserve some. Let's add some preservative so it can stay for us. And then we can eat it the following day. But God will say, no. This one is not normal food. It's a human being you're eating. Hmm? This is the body of Jesus. If you go and put salt in it, put preservative, you have now added sin to it. So don't preserve it. Because in doing it, you are putting, you are putting an addition to the body of Christ. You're bringing something strange to the body of Christ. Don't do that. That's why I said to them, don't preserve it till morning. 
eat it at once. Because if it's going to stay till morning, the implication is that you're going to add something to it. Whether salt, whether preservative, whether put it in the fridge and all that. So that's another warning. Apart from the unleavened bread warning, don't put living inside it. Don't put yeast inside it. God is also saying, concerning this thing you want to eat now, don't put it till morning. Don't put preservative. Don't put anything in the manner. It's not food like the one you cook. This is not normal food. Hello? Hello? You know, there are some people who claim they are Christians. And they know Jesus died for them. They are saved. But they are still adding things. Hmm? They're still adding things. Extra biblical things. Anywhere you go to, and what Jesus did on the cross is not enough. You have to run for your life. They have to tell you to go and bring soap. Go and bring a sponge, black sponge. Go and bring black soap. And buy broom. Hmm? You will match around the, uh, these premises 21 times. And after matching, you will now use the broom and sweep everywhere 29, 21 times. You are adding to the body. And that body will not be effective. Don't add. Don't add. The Bible says, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. So simple. What are you adding again? Eh? I want to pray for somebody now to receive his healing. What am I adding again? It's in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that. Because for some people, if you don't do all their bracadabra, then you're not powerful. Hmm. For the continuation of this message, please play the next track.